Hi there. I was fortunate enough to be contacted by a Radio User Magazine. Um, and they asked if I would test and write a review on the uh, Texan S8800. Uh, so I gladly agreed um, and it has arrived. So here it is. Um, I'm just going to do a unboxing video and give you my first impressions. I've done a bit of research on this radio already because uh, now that the kind of the second iteration uh, has actually hit the shelves, the first version apparently was suffering from multiple internal birdies, um, which is a big problem for any uh, well, shortwave radio listener, DX or etc. Uh, apparently they're all, they're all resolved now or as good as. So um, yeah, this is a radio of interest to me um, because apparently it's pretty sensitive. Uh, I've seen a couple of videos uh, online and um, I think one video suggested it was more sensitive uh, on a particular signal than the PL88-0 uh, uh, so you know, let's see. So let's see what's in the box. Um, So as with other Texan radios, you get a kind of carton. Uh, okay, so. Where's the actual radio? So there it is. Um, it's pretty large. Probably it's a similar size, I would say, to something like uh, Sony uh, ICF 2001D. Maybe slightly taller, not quite as long, but pretty similar, similar kind of size. Um, what else have we got in the box? Uh, two Texan lithium-ion rechargeable batteries, 3.7 volts each. Okay. Uh, ah. There's a uh, BNC connector. Uh, this is for the external antenna uh, um, connection on the back of the radio. Nice that they actually provide a connector that you can so you can make up your own fly lead. Um, and then there's a couple of power cables. This oh, here you go. So here's a USB power cable. So this thing can charge on five volts. And here we have the remote control. So this is the one aspect of this radio that's kind of new uh, that I've not seen before in a radio. Uh, is the fact that it operates via remote and that is actually the only method um, of direct frequency entry. So let's put the batteries in. So, battery's in, remote, the batteries are in that, switch it on, there you go. Okay, that's FM, so let's go. So this is the course tune. Five line. Oh, it's jumping around a little bit. Frequency. Interesting. And then we've got fine tune. And then there's, you know, you've got the audio is pretty good. And you find yourself nice. having a glass of wine at stage. You, I guess you might expect it's got a fairly large speaker. Um, so on first, what have we got? On first impressions, it looks pretty well made. Um, my experience with Texan radios is that. Bit of a paradox, really. Um, the PL360 was a revelation at under £30, and the PL310ET was superbly sensitive and selective receiver um, for less than £40. But the 680 I bought basically started falling out, uh, sorry, falling apart out of the box. Um, this, so this looks pretty well made. The, um, there's nice resistance in the controls, 
Um, I've seen it advertised anywhere from 260 to 300 pounds, which is a lot of money. Um, and although it looks pretty well made, the quality of this plastic, I think, well, to me, looks a little bit cheap for 300, potentially a 300 pound radio. Um, but, you know, uh, it does look pretty well put together. Um, so what have we got? So we've got rotary band selection here. Um, so we can go from long wave, medium wave, FM, short wave. Um, uh, AM bandwidth, so standard uh, bandwidth filters, six kilohertz, 2.3, three, four, there you go, and you just rotate through them. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, we've got separate tone and bass controls. So clearly this radio is designed for a listener who appreciates good audio. Um, push for shortwave meter band. Uh, what's this do? Okay, so that's the yeah, so that's the fine tune. But if you push it, um, it will scroll through the shortwave meter bands, which is quite nice. Um, okay, let's go back to AM for now. Uh, and then we've got some buttons, uh, obviously power button. I'm not sure I'm very keen on that big red power button, it seems a bit over the top. Uh, you can set the alarm, set the time, um, change the display from alarm time to time. Um, okay, and then there's, uh, okay, that's in for accessing the memory. Um, and then you've got AM, what they call AM norm, but then you can set this thing to lower sideband, upper sideband. Um, and what's interesting, actually, looking at this, when you tune this in sideband, uh, let's go to shortwave. We won't, there's no, I, won't, I won't be able to hear anything on 120 meters, but so if we go to sideband and then fine tune, so this thing tunes to within, so you can tune a signal to within 10 hertz, which is nice. Um, if you're in just AM, the resolution is uh, one kilohertz. So for a DXer um, on the tropical band, this, that's quite a useful function because it means that you can listen in uh, SSB uh, and fine and and fine tune the signal because quite often uh, on the tropical bands, the the, the st those stations don't always broadcast on the exact multiple of you know one kilohertz frequencies. You know, there's um, they're quite often. Uh, off frequency, so that's quite nice. Um, so that's the front panel, and as I said, it looks, in terms of assembly, it looks very well put together. I'm still not convinced about the quality of the plastic, but you know, I guess it, maybe it's a small point. And then on the remote, um, you can change shortwave band, you can toggle between uh, single sideband, USB, LSB to AM. You can adjust the bandwidth here on the remote control. You can set FM uh, stereo, um, and then you can adjust medium wave nine or 10 kilohertz steps. You can program stations into the memory, and then obviously then you can adjust the volume. You can scan backwards and forwards. And so most of the functionality of the radio is actually possible via the remote. So that's really excellent. Um, never really used a remote control before with a radio, uh, other than maybe my hi-fi tuner. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that works out, but uh, I've got no choice really, because this is the only method for uh, direct frequency input. So, um, Right, let's have a look what else we've got. There's nothing on the left-hand side. On this side of the radio, so there's internal, external antenna switch. There's no RF gain control on this radio, which is a bit disappointing, but it is a portable, but there's a DX local, so there's an attenuator, there's a um, RCA line out left and right, and then there's a socket for your a standard three and a half millimeter socket for a stereo uh, earphones. On the back, there's a kind of nod to, to, to the DXer. Um, there's a BNC shortwave uh, FM um, external uh, antenna socket, and then there's also a spring clip uh, AM band antenna and ground uh, connectors um, so what we basically have are, are high and low uh, impedance uh, uh, methods of attaching 
large, well, smaller large antennas to this radio, which is a really good idea and a clear nod to your average uh, shortwave listener slash DXer. So, so there we go. So that's basically it. Um, I, I'll do another video um, at some point uh, once I've had a chance to test this radio with various antennas. Um, Telescopic aerial is about four feet long. Let's just see if we can hear anything. Uh, let's pull it through. See if we can hear anything on the, on the telescopic at all. So there you go. The Texan S eighty eight hundred. Um, is it a tabletop radio? Is it a field radio? Who knows? But it'll be very interesting to test this radio. Um, see how sensitive it is. Um, it looks pretty selective. It's got decent range of uh, audio bandwidth filters. Um, you know, and overall, it's quite a nice looking piece of kit. Um, whether you would want to pay £300 for one of these or not, I don't know. Um, but it does it does sort of look the part. So, um, you know, is it what, you know, how does it actually perform? Uh, it'll be interesting, um, interesting to find out. So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to testing it. So, you know, let's see what happens. I'll, I'll do some tests on it and then, um, and then I'll do another video. Um, but in the meantime, uh, let me have your comments, um, and let's see, uh, uh, let's see how this thing works. Um, yeah, once I've um, taken it out to the woods and tested it, what I'll probably do is test it on the telescopic. Uh, I'll probably test it with the Wellbrook loop, um, and I'll probably attach a long wire to it and see what we can hear. So. Uh, that'll definitely be interesting and obviously um, I'll share the results with you on this channel so okay well that's it for now thanks for watching